Welcome to Soaring the Sky, a glider pilot's podcast. Hello, my name is Chuck. I will be your host, coming to you from the Mid-Atlantic region here in the United States and flying with the Cumberland Soaring Group. This is episode 39. This episode is brought to you by Arizona Soaring Incorporated, the nation's largest provider of professional glider training. Since 1969, they provided training from initial private through CFI Glider and entry level through advanced aerobatics. Open year-round, seven days a week. More information is available at azsoaring.com. On today's podcast, Isaiah joins us from New York. His aviation journey began when he was just three years old after sitting in the cockpit of an A-7 Corsair. He started flying airplanes when he was just nine years old, starting in a Cessna 172 and J-3 Cub. The same year, he began volunteering at the Empire State Aerosciences Museum in Scotia, New York as a guide and educator. A year later, he was one of the main founders of the museum's aviation camp, which started with nine in 2015, but then grew to 45 in 2019. By the time he started gliding in 2017 at 13 years of age at the Adirondack Soaring Club, he had already built up 20 hours of powered flying in eight types of airplanes, mostly in a Piper Cherokee, an RV-12, and a Mooney M20J. He did not get serious about gliding until 2019, and he's grateful enough to be able to attend the Civil Air Patrol's Glider Academies in Pennsylvania. There he flew the Superplanic L23 for the week. Afterwards, he went back to the Soaring Club and soloed in the Grobe 103. Currently, he is flying the club's Grobe 102 CS, which he hopes to do cross-country in the next year. Today, he has about 35 hours of powered and about 20 hours in gliders, totaling to 11 types. He still enjoys flying powered, but gliding will forever be his getaway. Join us now for Isaiah's story on Soaring the Sky. Isaiah, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you today. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. After finding out, you know, you were soaring and and soaring at a young age and interested at a young age i wanted to talk to you about it and there's other people obviously other students out there that are kind of in the same position you are flying young and it's great to see younger people get excited about soaring so how did it all get started for you well uh my interest in aviation started all the way back when i was three um so how it came about is that my grandfather took me to an air museum that we live about a half hour away from for an open cockpit day now, at that time, I had no clue what a glider was, but I did know that flying would definitely be something I was considering. So we get there. It was open cockpit day. I got to sit inside the cockpit of an A7 Corsair. That is probably one of the oldest things that I remember from getting started with aviation. Uh, I didn't start flying until I was around nine, which was in a biplane about a half hour at another airport out of a little grass strip. Even though then I could not see out of the cockpit, if I just knew I wanted to fly. That was when the spark ignited and then the fire was there that I needed to fly. Didn't really think about gliding because back then I thought, oh, only the cool people fly the powered planes and didn't really think about gliders until I got this new camera and... I wanted to go to this airport I'd never been to before, which was Saratoga Airport. Now, at that time, I did not know that they had a soaring club there. So we get there. My grandpa brought me there to take pictures of the airplanes. And we go by this one part where I saw a bunch of these weird-looking trailers. And we went up closer and found they were glider trailers. So I go, oh, okay, I get, that's kind of cool. Maybe I w- would want to try gliding. So we didn't go back for another few months. Um, we went up there in April, and that's where I saw the um, the glider club being active. We started talking to the people there. I got signed up that day, the week after I had my first intro flight, and it was the coolest flight ever. It was cooler than any power plane I've flown. I love how quiet it was, how peaceful it was but also just how much fun it is to fly a glider. And that was when I was 13. 
So you went on from there, and did you fly right away, or did you just wait a little bit? What happened? Well, after that flight, I went for about five more flights that year. So I really didn't make any progression, of course. It was only five flights. And I kind of lost interest. I didn't find it to be as fun as it was on the first flight. Um, I just thought it wasn't that cool. I went back the year year later, did another five flights, and it's I started to pick up interest again. But um, after I went to the soaring club, I went to a glider academy with the Civil Air Patrol. I got accepted to the Northeast Region Glider Academy out of Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania. And out of there, I got to fly for a week the L-23 Blanick. It was different from the Grove 103 I was flying before, but I started flying the L-23 and got really good at it throughout the week. And by the end of the week, I did a supervised solo. I went back to the soaring club after the academy, did about 16 flights in the Grove 103, and then soloed on my 37th flight. Very cool. How did that feel? It was definitely the coolest feeling in the world. Just being up at 3,000 feet by myself. It was a beautiful, clear day, calm winds. I did, it, it was just indescribable. Yeah, you kind of feel alone, but yet so much freedom and so much peace. Yeah, and I felt completely confident because I had the radio on me. There's people on the ground who've been supporting me the whole way. I knew that they were keeping an eye on me. I, I felt safe, and I'm sure they felt safe, too. So how was that coming into land? Well, the 103, the um, Grobe 103, this is the acro model, so it has the three wheels. It was definitely a challenge. It's always been a challenging plane to land. I did a really good landing on my first solo. I was impressed. Beautiful tail first landing, resting it softly on the main wheel. And then rolling it to the end of the runway, coming to a stop at the end, right in front, where I started again. That I just that was just the coolest feeling that, wow, I managed to do this by myself after all this hard work and dedication. Very rewarding for sure, you know, and there's only so many people that have ever soloed an aircraft. So you're part of that number now. So that's pretty awesome. Yes. So are you still flying the Grove then? Yep. So. About three flights after I was flying the Grobe 103, I got transitioned into my first single seater, the Grobe 102, and that is a that is a fun fun glider to fly. Yeah, the transition into the single seater is almost like another whole adventure. Yes, of course, I was a little little nervous at first because you get thrown into this glider that you can't do an intro like a introductory flight in it with an instructor because there's only one seat so you are basically teaching yourself how to get used to it and that was part of the fun of flying a single seater but i I love that glider so much now it is definitely my favorite favorite glider that i've flown so far what is the rest of the fleet there at the club well so our club we have two grobe 103 acros we have the grobe 102 for solo students and then for cross-country training we have a duo discus which is really really nice to have yeah very nice glider for sure so you're gonna eventually work your way up to that i'm sure yes hopefully hopefully next year i'll get a chance to fly in that because i'll be in a thermal with that and watch it out climb me and it just looks so sleek and so clean it just looks like so much fun to fly now you being a student what have you found that were some of your biggest challenges? My biggest challenge definitely is going to have to be landing the Grobe 103. Because what they want us to do is do a tail first landing. And getting that down was, it. that's basically after I came back from the academy and started flying the 103 again. Basically, the reason why I was not soloing was getting the landing down. Basically, you fly it about 10 feet above the runway. You open the brakes about halfway. You flare. It feels like you're almost pointing 45 degrees up. And then you put the tail on the ground, hold it a little bit, and then settle the main wheel on the ground. 
and getting that down perfectly without slamming it into the ground and staying on center line. And usually there's a crosswind at this airport on the runway we were using, but getting that down was definitely the hardest part. It is different from any glider or airplane I've flown. I'm going to say that was definitely the hardest part for me. And what would you say one of the easiest things you found learning to soar? Well, I would say the easiest part was just generally flying around, just having, um, as long as you have the altitude, the space, there isn't a lot of traffic. Um, I've been flying power planes before I started gliding. I had about maybe 20 hours of flying around Moonies, Cherokees before I got into the glider. So as long as I had the altitude and the space and I had some room to play around, that was probably the easiest part because it's still flying. You just don't have an engine and you really can't control your altitude. I'm sure just the basic flying is probably the easiest for, I would say, most students. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, it starts getting harder, especially in this type of glider, the 103. What can you tell somebody that maybe is flying power now and they're like, Isaiah, why would you go to the gliders? You were, you were flying power. What would you tell them? I would tell them that it is you will probably have more fun flying a glider than a power plane. Sadly, you can't travel in the glider, but if you just go up by yourself in one of these fiberglass high-performance gliders, just there's so much more freedom. You're, it's silent. It's almost like you are a bird. It is just so... It's it's refreshing flying a glider. You don't have to listen to anything. It's just so free. That's really how the only way I can describe it, because it's just a feeling that you really can't describe. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. It's definitely a feeling you can't describe. And I've flown a little bit of powered myself, and I definitely fell in love with the gliders once I discovered them after the fact. And I, I really don't have any desire to fly anything else. Nothing, nothing against anything out there, you know. Power is good to fly at A to B, but to really experience flight, I, I love the feeling of the glider for sure. Definitely. The stick and rudder skills that you learn from flying a glider, it just becomes so helpful later on if you were to fly powered later on. Yeah, because when the engine goes, they're all gliders anyway. Yep. <laughs> that's that's basically it. So if you had a, a flight that really sticks out in your mind besides your solo flight, what would that be? Going to have to say there's this one flight at the Glider Academy went to a Pennsylvania. So all week... We could not find any lift. And if there was any lift, it was usually the time I was not in the air because of our rotation. We only have four gliders for 16 students. It was random at what time you would be taking off, whether it was a good time or a bad time. So it wasn't until Thursday when the academy ended Saturday. So it did not look like it was going to be a good soaring day at all. But we go up, we top the 3,000 feet in the L-23 release and then about five minutes later for the first time the whole entire week i saw the vario move more than zero and it was just a little celebration oh my god we actually are climbing for once and we start cent centering this thermal it ended up being a good six knot thermal we climbed up to around 4500 feet we went from this one thermal to another cloud where we connected with some other gliders and by this time, all of us were basically a family. We all love um, flying, being together. So being together in all these gliders, flying together, was definitely the coolest feeling that week because we're climbing, we're staying up for over an hour. I'm with probably some of the best people I'll ever meet in my life, and what other better what better way to enjoy it than flying together so that ended up being a really really cool flight for me yeah flying with other people in a thermal is a very cool experience i've got to experience that a couple of times myself and yeah there's something about you know you're all up there getting this great thermal hanging out together hanging out in the air and yeah how many people get to do that right yeah it's basically a party in the sky uh, right there you go so I know you're a young pilot and you're fairly new at this, but if there would be a safety tip you could give somebody that, that you've learned for yourself to make you a safer pilot, what would that be? I would say is that 
Um, and also, I would also, this would help with progressing in your training, is to get in the mindset of a pilot. And what I mean by that is to be focused all the time on what you need to get done so that it's done safely and properly. An example of this is where I started to fall behind on this. My last, one of my last flights, I did not pre-flight all the way around because I was a little bit in a rush to get in the sky. And this is one of those things where it's a lesson learned. I take off on tow and my airspeed is reading 120 knots on tow and definitely knew that was not right. So I climbed up to about 2000 feet, released, came back, found out my, I put the total energy probe into the pedo. So that was where, that was just one of those times where I lost focus and I wasn't really in the mindset of what I should be doing and that it should be done properly and safe because safety is of course number one in flying or anything so learning to be a it's be a pilot be focused just make sure that everything is done properly you do the pre-flight you check the weather you you're in a good mood you follow the i'm safe checklist and just i would say that is my safety well just tip overall yes some great advice for sure always make sure you go through those checklists and Have them in your hands so you don't forget anything when you're going around the aircraft. Yes. Don't try to memorize anything because you will you will forget it one day. One thing I would like to add, I mentioned before on how I've been um, trying to get people my age into aviation. I am very impressed on I got about three of my friends who are not they were on the fence about trying gliding. And what I don't get is that they live less than five minutes from the airport. And it's just like, why haven't you tried this yet? So I got them out to the airport, got them for their first intro flights. They cannot wait for next season. They already have about 10 flights in. And I, it's just awesome to see that we're getting other people, young people into aviation. And another place I do that is at the Air Museum where I sat in my first plane. So when I was nine, I started volunteering there in the education department. So I was teaching classes about aviation to young, old, any any type of person. And when I was 10, we started an aviation camp for young people who were interested in aviation. So I've been doing doing that. That was so th- this year was our 5th year running the camp. We had about 40 kids and th- I got some of them interested into gliding. So just I find it to be I'm really proud that I am hopefully making an impact on getting young people in aviation because we need pilots desperately. That is very cool. Thank you for doing that. You know, you, you have a powerful tool, and that is that you're not only a glider pilot, but you're also young. So, you know, they're going to listen to what you have to say. And we definitely need those young people to get into aviation and, and to get interested. And like I've said before on the podcast, you know, the young people that we do get to come out to the airport, they are really excited once they get there. So it sounds like you're getting them there and you're getting them excited. And that is that is really cool. Yeah. And then we do motivate each other. We definitely we want each other to succeed. We want to help each other to get to the solo, to get to our license. We want to help each other as much as we can. Very cool. Isaiah, I appreciate you taking your time this afternoon get on the podcast here and to tell your story and to get other young people interested in aviation and interested in gliding. Thank you for that. And keep up the great work. Keep up the great work of spreading the word about aviation. And you had said you volunteered at the museum. Um, Do you have any suggestions on how other people could just just do something similar to that? How did you get into that? Well, so I got into the aviation museum. This is um, an airport a pretty big airport. It's not an international airport, but they have a flight school there. They have um, C-130s fly out of there. It's a pretty, it's a decent sized airport. But my advice would be for anyone who's interested in aviation is to just go to your local av- um, lo- local airport just to see what the environment's like, to meet people who have planes, to just see how the airport operates, maybe listen to the tower if there's one there. 
Because that's basically how I got started with flying powered planes was when I was at the Air Museum, someone would taxi in with one of their planes to visit the museum. I would go out, ask them, hey, is there any chance I could go for a ride? And got made connections. And I have gone lots of cool places with just meeting up with people who are willing to fly young people around and just introduce them to aviation. But yeah, visiting any local airport and just seeing just seeing what an airport is what aviation is it's just a good way to get into aviation because then you have that motivation some great advice isaiah thank you and thanks for being on the podcast check back with us i want to hear how your flight training is going oh yes totally hopefully i'll get my license next april that is my goal sounds like a good goal if you would like soaring to be in your future and you have not taken that first guest ride a great place to do that ssa.org find out where your local club is in your area and you can take your first flight if you want to get a hold of us michelle is here to let us know how you can do that you can find us on social media on facebook it's soaring the sky podcast on instagram it's the same if you would like to say hi just drop Chuck a line at chuck at soaringthesky.com or you can send us a note on the website that's soaringthesky.com. Also, if you're a pilot, we want to hear your story. Just send us an email and Chuck will get in touch with you. We hope you join us next week for another great guest and adventure on Soaring the Sky.